Hi everyone, good morning. It's good to have you here today. Uh, I'm the Reverend Sally Haynes Hubble, Rector of St. Paul's, and I am here for our morning, morning devotion um, here at St. Paul's. So, um, we always pray out of the Book of Common Prayer, page 137, but no worries if you don't have a BCP, and I will lead you along in our devotion this morning. Let us pray. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, we um, have jumped back to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, we skipped a bit, um, and now we are in chapter 22, verses 1 through 13. Now, the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make the preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. So, um, here we are in the institution of the Lord's Supper, um, is what is coming up next. So, we're in this um, state of... Uh, reading this now in Advent, I heard a devotion from the Bishop of Colorado yesterday where she was talking about, um, she was referring to a devotion that she had given in Lent where she said, this is the Lentiest Lent I've ever lived through. And she was saying um, in this devotion, this Advent devotion, this is the Advi Adventiest Advent, um, the most sort of in that liminal space of um, what now? What next? And um, so it seems kind of fitting that we're reading um, this very Lenten Holy Week passage in, um, in Advent because um, the resurrection is really the second birth of Jesus. It's, in a way, it is the second coming. You know, the first coming is the birth in, um, in the manger of Mary and Joseph in the, the nativity story, the second coming is the birth from the tomb. And that's sort of where we find ourselves right now, um, in that space between of waiting. So I guess it's kind of appropriate um, to be reading that now, or at least we can make sense of it. Um, this morning on my walk, I listened to a um, a podcast by Kate Bowler, the um, woman who wrote that book, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I Have Loved. And um, there were, she, she was answering questions that um, listeners had sent in. And one of the questions was, how do you hang on to your belief in God? Um, just sort of in general, I think a lot of the, you know, she has stage four colon cancer. She's a young woman with stage four cancer. Um, and a lot of the people who she interviews and 
um, you know, other questions coming in were from people who are dealing with really, really serious things in life, um, situations to struggle, that they struggle with. And I think that um, the gist of her message is um, we can't make sense of everything that's happening to us. And in a way, we're not even called to make sense of it. Um, as much as we want to, and as much as that makes us feel like we have some control over the situation, um, the gist is just to um, to live day to day in that in between space that is life. And um, so her answer about how she stays, how she continues to believe in God, is um, it came down to that this is this story of love that she finds herself in. One thing she said, which is very true, is that um, the church is one of the places that gives us permission to be truthful about what is really happening in our lives. Church often, churches are not always truthful. Um, we can be incredibly frustrated with our church families. Um, but when we're at our best, it's the place where we can be honest. And that's the whole point of confession, that we do things known and unknown um, that are so far from perfect. And, and there's forgiveness and we move on and life goes on and there's a new day and love is greater than our imperfections. Love is greater than anything that can defeat us. And um, so she was just talking about how the story um, is basically the story of God is the story of love alive in the world and the story of love reaching out to us in the midst of all of our many fallen imperfections. And that's the story that we come to. And it's why um, the story that we listen to now, the advent of God being born into the world in human form is the story that we listen to maybe with the greatest hope of all because it's the beginning of um, it's the beginning of hope especially for us who are grafted into um, God's chosen people who are grafted into the the story of what it means to be God's children and to become sisters and brothers who know um, ourselves to be part of God's family. So this is the beginning of it all, but it doesn't come um, easily. It doesn't come, uh, it doesn't come without us still having to hang on to the trials of loving one another in our daily lives. And that means loving one another in all of our faults, loving ourselves in all of our faults and putting up with um, our many failures, including our failing health and our disappointments in life. But somehow all of it just gets picked up into the story of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I'm going to shut the door because I did not do that and my son is also in a class. Hold on. I have done that before we started. All right, my friends. Um, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many, many blessings of our lives here today. We give you thanks for this day, for our families, this church family, and all the people who show us what it means to love and all the opportunities that we have in our lives to, to know your grace and to show your grace in the world around us. Lord, we lift up people who are suffering everywhere. We lift up those who are sick, 
We lift up healthcare workers, county officials, government officials everywhere. Lord, I pray that your strength, your presence, your comfort, and um, your power to do what must be done to um, make good and honest, truthful decisions for the common good will be upon all those, all of us who have the opportunity to show that today. Lord, we lift up before you all those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for continuing strength and healing for Catalina and for James. We pray for Michael and Deborah, Robin, Marjorie, Anne, Suzanne and Richard and Amy, for Alice, Christine, Joyce and all of her family, for JP and Barbara, Cecilia, Frank, Tony, Lynn, Eric, Jasper, Mary, David, Linda, Jim, and Father Harry. In our congregational cycle of prayer, we pray for Rosie Otsby, Katie and Carol Hayden, Lorena Castaneda and her children, and Marie Canale. And Lord, we pray that you hear us now. Say the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, my friends. I hope you all have a good day, a productive day. Um, it's going to be getting cooler, I think. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, working on our Christmas pageant this Sunday. Um, and we're beginning to put all that stuff together now. Um, if you have any grandchildren or nieces or nephews who might want to be part of the pageant, um, either filming in person on Sunday the 13th at two o'clock or um, filming in their own home remotely dressed as shepherds or sheep or angels or lots of other things. Um, let me know. Get, uh, call the church office and um, I will get back to you with instructions for how to film them at home and we're gonna put them all together in an incredible video. It's gonna be great. All right, um, everyone take care. Uh, peace be with you. God bless you and I will see you tomorrow. Oh wait, no, tomorrow's Friday. Linda will see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye.